All right, so today I'm gonna to be giving my take on one of the coolest reef tank build videos I've seen in probably ever. It's only a nano tank, but the video is just jam packed with video content and storytelling. So this video is from Dr. Plant, so check them out. I mean, outstanding channel. And it was only posted three months ago, but it looks like he already has seven point something million views already. So let's just get right to it. Within this tank lives a miniature world. Animals will adapt, partnerships will form, and life must face Mother Nature herself. Right away, very theatrical. You got people's attention. Even if you're not into aquariums, you're gonna be watching this. It transformed from a barren wasteland into a thriving ecosystem. To understand the mysteries within, we must go back to day one where it began with the tank, some rock, and a- So very smart, he's starting with the rock. Rock first makes things more stable, less chance of your tank cracking, and then you put the sand. Really nice aquascape, actually. He took his time, probably has a lot of those rocks glued or putty together. So I introduce Plankton, the bottom of the food. I like how he introduces Plankton. I mean, it's probably copepods and other uh, crustaceans that you get in the reef hobby, but it's really cool that he does that first just to kind of make it very, uh, you know, Triassic, like how life was created, basically. On day 12, I introduced macroalgae. Now he's starting to add the macroalgae. That's kind of cool. Back to the concept of, you know, building it nice and slow. I love how he's doing the whole introduction of animals, you know. Now he's doing the hermit crabs, you know, it's a whole story that he's building here. And it's actually smart to do it this way, to be honest. This way, as soon as you have fish that have fish poop or uneaten food, the hermit crabs are already getting to work. The algae is already starting to establish so it can consume nitrates and other um, nutrients from the water. Now he's adding a pistol shrimp for a snail predator. That's pretty cool. You do have to add him with a Gobi if you want them to do well because they are blind. He actually just mentioned that in the video too. It's funny. He put him in there first and, you know, making it look like the hermit crabs are uh, <laughs> going to outnumber him. Hermit crabs won't really harm a pistol shrimp. Pistol shrimp uh, would probably kick their butt. But these gobies do have a symbiotic relationship with the pistol shrimp so that the uh, pistol shrimp creates the cave and the gobi is being the watch guard in the front. After adding them into the tank, they seem to have all vanished. But underground, they were building a fortress. Really nice footage here. I mean, how do you even get that? Meanwhile, above ground, the rock was looking barren and empty. It was time to introduce coral. They may so just scoly like coral, those aren't rock, cheap. But with time, Palothella they coral begin right there. Nice little zoanthid coral. That's a Christmas tree coral. This is a symbiotic relationship between worms and a coral that basically the worms live in. Um, pretty tough animal to keep alive. You have to feed the tank a lot so that they can constantly uh, grab food from the water column, uh, but in a nano tank, I mean, being able to pump a lot of food in a small tank is usually not the way to go. Six line wrasse, nice little predator. He can go after certain pest worms and such. Um, you know, that Christmas tree rock might be uh, up for grabs. Back to the theatrical thing, you know, the night is coming and all the coral are closing up, fish are going to hide. I just love it. I love what he did at night here. You know, he's got a little flashlight. He's like moving from side to side, you know, making it look like a scary movie. It's smart to throw some food in the tank at night if you want to see all kinds of little critters come out. That's a Nassari snail. 
Here's the next day. I mean, this tank looks really nice. Everything's really bright. He probably has a really good light spectrum and camera. It's Ganapura coral, not the easiest. Algae's starting to grow, that makes sense. You know, he has all these animals in there. He's probably feeding them, and the algae's consuming all those nutrients and growing. So he threw one of these uh, cake urchins, I believe they're called. They're good algae eaters for bigger plant structures. Now he's simulating this hurricane. You know, a lot of these lights uh, actually have an app with a setting that you can have them, you know, create a bit of a hurricane setting. You know, it's the lights flash and you can also set your wave maker pumps to create all kinds of um, random flow. Um, so that's probably what he's doing here. You know, he might be using a turkey baser here and there just to make it fun, but uh, it's funny. A lot of aquariums actually have that application. Could be a little stressful to the fish, could have some use. Starting to add some sponges. Now, quick thing you should know about sponge, they should never really be exposed to the air. Uh, you know, when you get a bag, make sure to just submerge the bag, open it up, put it in the water. Not an easy animal to keep alive because they're filter feeders, just like the Christmas tree worms. They like constant food just floating around them. You call that a sponge crab, but um, more than likely that's a decorator crab. There's different kinds of decorator crabs, but you can even see on his body, he's got tiny little Velcro type hairs to where he can attach um, coral and other objects to him for defense. Feather dusters are pretty cool, especially if you want to get a nice video like that. Careful if you have certain wrasses, they can go after them, just like any worm. By day 72, the reef had become a refuge for many forms of life. Clamp's pretty cool. It's a lettuce nudibranch. They're actually uh, selective eaters and only eat a certain type of hair algae. So, you know, maybe he had some hair algae and used it to take care of it or, um, but that's all they really eat and usually die off. She created a spiral of hundreds and hundreds of eggs. Crazy, you got a video of it hatching eggs though. It's a big anemone. Probably some type of long tentacle anemone. It is a lot like my mother-in-law. Anemones are deceptively beautiful. Uh, one big difference of anemone and coral, anemones kind of have like a mind of their own. You can put them somewhere, but they can move if they want to. Uh, a lot of coral can, you know, grow and maybe drop an arm and detach and grow somewhere else, but they don't actually move like an anemone would. It's actually related to a jellyfish. Picture a jellyfish just being upside down, basically. There is a fish that is immune to the deadly skin. Clownfish have the extra slime coat. He just mentioned that. It's pretty cool. They're uh, immune to the sting of a lot of anemones. A lot of other damselfish have it too, but clownfish are the iconic one. It's called a symbiotic relationship. Again, so many symbiotic relationships in the ocean. During the day, the tank seems like a peaceful paradise. But as day sets to night... Is he going to do another storm here? Now that he has more coral and animals, it's pretty cool to see nighttime and All the how everything's different. And for good it's a clown goby. They actually like to hang out on coral. I've actually had one of them destroy one of my tanks. I added in some dead shrimp to bring out. There he goes again with nighttime the feeders. For their ritual hunt, and so did something new. Oh my goodness! What is that thing? <laughs> Just some kidding. animals are just better left a mystery. That's funny. He said some animals are left a mystery. He didn't even tell the viewers. <laughs> just to keep you wondering. That's so smart. But uh, that's a type of starfish, actually. He's adding a new predator. It's a hawkfish. Long-nosed hawkfish. Uh, they are technically not reef safe. You know, they can go after small invertebrates, small crabs and snails. But I've actually never had one be very problematic in my tank. Other types of hawkfish, yes. But this one is probably the best one. Sea monkeys! Even though they're getting eaten. That is enough food for the day. Now 
Now as the sun began to set, the coral put on a show. They light up the night to attract plankton. This type of candy cane coral, more of these palithoa. I saw some kind of bioluminescence algae, but I don't think that's in his tank. There's no way. Yeah, he's starting to talk about how much more beautiful the ocean might be. Or so I thought. Or not. Over half our coral reefs are now nothing more than a graveyard. The ones wow, that I love how he's bringing meaning to the video here. Because this is what's really going on. Reef tanks are awesome. They're colorful. But... Still hope. And thanks to your support, I am donating $10,000 to the Coral Restoration Foundation. So that does it. I mean, absolutely beautiful video. You should, you should watch the full video. It's down in the description. Um, so, yeah. See you all around.